Hello friends, Big Andy here, bringing you another Dota 2 video on behalf of Dota Alchemy in which we're going to be discussing how you can possibly gain thousands of MMR just by farming properly and efficiently in Dota 2. So to give you a bit of a backstory on why I wanted to make this video in particular, uh, essentially Valve broke matchmaking for high immortal players this weekend, so you couldn't queue for a game without getting like one to two hours of queue time, which is fine. I totally understand, a lot of people are bitching about it. It's not a big deal. They want to fix matchmaking and make it better for everybody. It's going to be a process, naturally. But I really wanted to queue for a game anyway. So I hopped onto my secondary 6K account, Turtle Jerker 69 and I queued up for a game and I played Kunko. So I spent a lot of time in this game split pushing. And to me, my uh, assessment of it was that I was making a lot of space. My entire team was farming extremely well but I was getting spam pinged. I had a lot of people bitching at me that, hey, Turtle Jerker, you're spending too much time farming. Maybe we need to spend more time fighting. So this made me have the realization that I think there's some confusion in the Dota 2 community about what constitutes the different types of farm. And that's what this video is about. So without further ado, let's get right into it. First, let's discuss the benefits of farming neutral creeps versus farming lane creeps. So the pros for farming neutral creeps, and uh, keep in mind, these are potential pros. This is not necessarily true. Uh, the most obvious benefit is that farming neutral creeps will give you gold. They will give you resources, gold and experience. Uh, another benefit to farming neutral creeps is that it reveals no information to the enemy team because it is most likely that when you are farming neutral creeps, you are out of vision. It's also very safe as a result of this. When you enter the lane and you start farming lane creeps, this is where you can die. But if you're farming neutrals, you have a very low chance of dying compared to lane creeps. Uh, also, neutral creeps can be farmed by both teams. So if you are farming neutrals, then you are uh, potentially taking farm away from the enemy team, which is obviously going to be good because it denies them resources. Next, let's talk about the pros of farming lane creeps as opposed to neutral creeps. So, of course, both neutral and lane creeps are going to give you gold and experience. Generally, lane creeps are going to give you more unless you're farming a stack or an ancient camp. However, you're going to get about the same from both in terms of resources, in terms of gold and experience. But there are other objectives on the map, such as forcing the enemy team to have to respond to creeps being pushed into their tower. Now, why do they have to respond to creeps being pushed into their tower? It's because they don't want to take tower damage. Tower HP is precious. There are very few ways in Dota to heal your tower. They don't want backdoor protection to be turned off for their tier 2s because that risks that the enemy team is going to split push them. So they're going to be constantly worried about this. And as a result, they're going to respond to the creeps being pushed in. On top of that, lane creeps give vision. And what that means is if you push the lane creeps in by farming them and they're at the enemy's tier 2 tower, they cannot TP to that tier 2 and walk past into the jungle to farm that jungle because they will get scouted. So it's very dangerous for them. In other words, lane creeps can be used very easily to strategically manipulate the enemy team around the map and jungle creeps cannot. Lane creeps can be used to quarantine the enemy team into their base and into a small section of the map and uh, neutral creeps cannot. In fact, lane creeps are secretly the answer to almost everything in Dota. All of the problems in Dota. Is the enemy team 5-manning you? Then you can split them up by hitting lane creeps. Is the enemy team taking Roshan? You can punish them for this or force them to stop uh, Roshing by hitting lane creeps. Is the enemy team uh, just beating you and you're straight up losing the game? You can make space for your team by getting the enemy team to run at you by pushing lane creeps. This does not happen with neutral creeps. So if you ever don't know what to do in Dota, generally, if you go find a lane and hit creeps in it, a good thing will happen thereafter. Next, I would like to dispel the thought that neutral creeps are equivalent everywhere you go. No matter what, the neutral creeps are just neutral creeps. That is not the case. And I don't mean that these shard golems or mud golems or whatever you want to call them are less valuable than these granite golems. I don't mean that in terms of inequality. I mean inequal to punishing the enemy team. 
So in Dota, you can break the map down into four quadrants when it comes to farming. You have your triangle, your jungle, their jungle, and then their triangle. Typically, in a winning game, you might occupy three of these quadrants if you're lucky, uh, and you'll be farming three of these quadrants if you're lucky, maybe two in an even game or in a slightly winning game, and one, which is usually going to be your triangle in a losing game. The safest place on the map to farm is the triangle, the second safest is your jungle, the third safest is their jungle, and the least safe place to farm on the map is their triangle. Now unfortunately, well maybe fortunately because the game would be very boring otherwise, the order of which it benefits you to farm these places is the opposite. It's most beneficial to farm their triangle, it's second most beneficial to farm their jungle, and so forth. And the reason for that is because if you farm your triangle and you are using heroes and wards to secure your tri triangle, chances are, because of how distant these towers are away from each other and how far out this bottom jungle is here, you are not going to have access to your jungle. So if you are working on securing your triangle, you're going to be stuck in your triangle. Uh, likewise, if you take the enemy's triangle, then chances are they are not feeling safe enough to go into their jungle anyway. So farming their triangle is the best place on the map to farm, but the most dangerous. So, with that being said, that is why farming over here is not equivalent to farming over here, or obviously farming over in the enemy triangle. If you are a farm taking core, your job is to try to figure out how strong you are and where that permits you to farm. So in this particular instance, this team is losing, so they are restricted to their triangle. So OD can push mid, and he might head over here, which would probably be a mistake. It's probably better for him to take this jungle over here, or show up to a fight with us, which is also perfectly okay. But essentially, your job is to find the least safe place to farm, even if you are a carry. This is one of the big differences between carries now and carries a few years ago, is that carries now look to essentially make space by Farming, yes, they don't really show up to that many team fights, but they farm in places where the enemy team has to push them out. They have to put in work to get them out of there. So, with all of that being said, if you are strong, extremely strong, farm the enemy triangle. Make them push you out of there. You will be farming, but you will be doing a lot of work just from hitting neutral creeps in this area. If you are pretty strong, then farm their jungle. If you aren't that strong and you just want some space to come online, if you have some late game heroes, like let's say OD, maybe you can farm your own jungle. And for God's sakes, try not to farm the triangle unless you absolutely have to, because this is the easiest place on the map for your team to farm. So if you're farming it, then it means that any hero that's not strong on your team is basically not going to be farming anywhere if you're strong. So depending on where you farm, you can actually be winning or losing your team the game. That's a big Thing that I think a lot of people don't understand is that they'll be farming and they'll lose the game and they'll be top net worth and they'll say my team sucks but really if you're strong you should not be farming the triangle you can be losing your team the game because you're not using your strength to farm somewhere better such as their jungle your jungle or best case scenario their triangle anyway that's it for this video guys thank you so much for watching make sure to check us out at patreon.com slash dota alchemy i put up four fresh coaching sessions up there today they're all about an hour or more long so if you're looking for some more content you want to get good at dota 2 then uh, hit us up on there you're also supporting your boys which of course we genuinely appreciate anyway i love you guys and i'll see you in the next video